Jason, I don't know if, if it's just me, but I can't hear you. Uh, uh, How about now? Yes. All right. Now we are on. You did your whole intro and you look, you were so engaging, but I couldn't hear a thing of it. Well, so. let, let's take it from the top then. Power. The listening <laughs> version is over. Powering your equity crowdfunding campaign, strategies to build an empowered investor community. Today's session is all about audience building, which is a direct predictor for how much any campaign could raise. And excited to be on the line here with you, Abby. Uh, for those of you who don't know Abby personally, she is a lead account manager here, strategist at DNA, and going to be bringing those firsthand insights, even for our live campaigns, to the discussion. Thanks, Abby. Jason. It's so great to be here with you. I um, have so much passion for equity crowdfunding, and I love getting into these campaigns. So I can't wait to dive in and talk about what we do to help build audiences. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad we're in full audio now. Uh, I'm going to pull up our deck, our presentation. If you're a regular attendee of our webinars, you'll know we put together a deck here. Our creative director, Brendan, our head of content marketing, Khalil, spend a, a great amount of time putting this together. So we're going to pull up those slides, walk through this in detail. Abby, can we kick things off with, with your background, your, your history, while I uh, get the slides going? Sure, happy to share. I've been at DNA for just over a year now, but it's built on um, over 10 years working with startups of all sizes, right? So after my master's degree in international environmental policy, um, I started off with a, a really interesting um, social impact startup, a very global one, where I learned a ton about uh, fundraising and the kinds of messaging that you want to share with your investors over time. Um, and since then, I've worked with a variety of different startups, including the Kohler Corporation, when they decided to start making more social impact endeavors. Um, I was part of their corporate social responsibility team for a bit. But now here I am at DNA, and I'm really happy to dive in. I love the variety of clients that we have, and it really gives me the chance to learn from each one of them. And, you know, I really like the problem solving aspect of marketing. So when we can help figure out things that can unlock fundraising for different kinds of companies, that's really satisfying. Um, so that's a little bit about me. <laughs> there you go. An impact investor enthusiast. Uh, love the campaigns that you share with the audience here, um, uh, as well as the team. So we're going to be going into some of the things that you look for in the foundation of a successful race and want to start by posing the question, uh, have our profile pics here. Of course, if you reach out to our team, you get a copy of this deck, have a copy of the video live within a week as well too. But want to begin today's discussion by posing the question, why focus on building empowered investor community is important. Why can't founders just bring in investments? Why, why should there be any emphasis placed on community building? Abby, if you want to kick things oh, off. Absolutely, yeah. To, we, all, we always say that you have to bring the crowd to crowdfunding, right? So I, you I very much have to the, the most successful campaigns have founders that put a lot of effort into getting the word out, right? And, but it's more than just that. We can use digital marketing techniques to help build your audience over time. Um, it's absolutely critical though. I mean, getting out your message is the first step to convincing people why it's the right investment for them to make. 
Um, and, you know, a lot of the, and another part of it is that the peer-to-peer -peer marketing is extremely powerful, right? So if you can not only engage your audience as investors, but also get them to share those messages, then um, those are great tools for audience building and can really help propel your raise. Absolutely. The way I look at it is on a regulation crowdfund, a reg CF campaign, the average investment is going to be $1,000, perhaps $2,200 on a reg A plus, which both are available for retail and accredited investors to participate in, uh, except the reg CF caps of 5 million, reg A plus can go up to 75 million per year. And for every million dollars raised on a thousand dollar average, you probably need 50,000 visitors to get to your campaign. Uh, that takes an account of 2% conversion rate, uh, takes a, you know, account of a thousand dollar average investment. You know, maybe, maybe it's 20, 25,000 visitors on a reg eight plus and a higher investment value. Uh, but you get the idea. You need a lot of traffic. When that traffic gets there, if they see a, a warm party of investors who have already participated, 100 investors, $100,000 raised, $1,000 average each, it says something. And in a much stronger fashion than $20,000 from one investor or, or 20 for that matter. So how do you get those initial investments? It's all from that pre-existing audience and the announcement, compliant announcement, of course, uh, of, of your race. So in due time, whether it's for reservations during the test of waters or a private mode, whether it's during you know, your live sale, different rules in terms of what you can mention, you definitely want to speak to the compliance side, but the audience gives you a, a head start. Somebody calls us tomorrow and says, hey, we have 200,000 people in our email audience. We have 500,000 people on our social audiences. Not only are we going to promote this to them, but, but we anticipate hundreds of thousands of dollars based on you know, some of the individuals involved. We anticipate millions of dollars. That, that kicks off the round. That gets the crowd assembled. And as we start pointing the investors in our network uh, or, or any advertising platform, any outreach platform, the investor audiences that are available there towards that type of activity, uh, it, it's a much stronger response. So if you have time before your equity crowdfund campaign, build your audience. Uh, if you have time before any marketing initiative for that matter, you know, you can talk about pre-launch at length. There are ways you could do it that are compliant. There are ways that you can't with equity crowdfunding, uh, but audience building beforehand, being able to uh, showcase um, that is, is going to produce a much stronger uh, response as a, a rule of thumb. So, you know, getting back to the document here, harnessing the power of an engaged asset, uh, engaged audience, it's a powerful asset for crowdfunding success. So not only having that audience, but, but engaged one at that, a uh, warm pool of en enthusiasts of your product, of your brand, who are going to be excited when they learn about an investment opportunity. Uh, word of mouth referrals, as Abby was mentioning, peer-to-peer -peer marketing is the ultimate marketing. And, and shares from an engaged audience create momentum and attract more supporters. So by, by leveraging this, this network effect, the crowd, by having people talk about and share your startup contributes to building a strong crowdfunding community. Uh, and, and only anticipate a percentage of that community to actually invest. You know, Google says an average conversion rate is 2%, 2.35. That's where I get those metrics of 50,000 visitors and 1,000 you know, investments coming from that. Ho hopefully, your community invests at a higher percentage than that, but I would rather project conservatively and be pleasantly surprised when it goes past that 2%. So that's why we speak about it in that fashion. And Abby, anything to add about powerful asset of an engaged audience? Absolutely. You know, we see it on the top campaigns. The top campaigns really um, have the most engaged audiences. And, you know, equity crowdfunding can be tough as an overall industry in that the top 10, 15 of, of all campaigns are getting the most of the overall investment momentum across all the open um, 
offerings that are live, right? So, you know, we can look and see what are the top raises doing. And they are doing a lot. Generally, they're spending a lot on, on advertising because that's a proven way to drive traffic to their offering page for new, new eyeballs. Um, but they're also really engaged with building their audience organically. Organically can come across multiple channels, right? That could be um, social media. It could be a Facebook group that you build. It could be a LinkedIn audience, depending on um, you know, what kind of an industry you're in. LinkedIn is an extremely powerful B2B platform, um, and it can be really great for um, getting the word out on your reg CF. So, um, and it's not just that. I mean, you, you want to really be firing on all fronts. Equity crowdfunding takes a lot of effort, and you're going to want to, you're going to want to be doing it all. Like, keep them engaged and be there all the time, reminding them, bringing them back to your offering page, if you know that on average, the investor needs to visit your brand probably more than a dozen times, then that really is an indicator to say that the frequency of posting has to be rather high. Um, so there are techniques that you know we, we leverage to help build an audience and I'd say it's worth it. It takes effort and time. Anyway, that's, that's pretty much my main, main points there, Jason. <laughs> It's such a strong way to look at it. Again, when we get in touch with an issuer, they're usually asking us, how fast can we be live with an advertising campaign? How quick they're gonna be able to see investments accordingly. And it's very much uh, at a disadvantage in comparison to starting with the strategy, move into a pre-launch marketing. We have great materials out there on our eight point plan and building your strategy checklist that you can use um, and then moving to this, this audience building. And, and as Abby's mentioning, testing all different channels that you'll be able to use during the live campaign. Uh, but uh, you know, to build up this audience, I've learned a lot of fundamentals from reward crowdfunding, campaigns on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and I knew agencies that would not take a campaign live until the audience was over 10,000 email subscribers. Audience size is a direct uh, predictor in terms of how much uh, a campaign can raise. So, you know, if you have 2% clicking through and another 2% investing, it, it doesn't come out to a huge number of investments. Um, hopefully it's a more engaged audience. It's a much higher click through, especially across a sequence, a drip of emails. Uh, but, you know, being able to then look at the traffic, the algorithm for how many investments is coming through. And, and this can engage a diverse audience, friends, family, customers, partners, uh, media, peers, enhance the potential for, for higher conversion rates. Uh, but again, you're, you're not going to get percentages that are out of the, the realm of, of you know, possibility, out, out of the standards. You're not gonna get 100% of people in your email list to even open your email, let alone invest. Uh, the subject line, you know, 20, 30% open rate is considered average. You know, maybe you're getting upwards of 50. Wouldn't anticipate anything higher than that, even from warm audiences. So, uh, you know, the, the, the sheer volume is gonna play an important thing here. And then of course, quality. Um, Abby, what are some experiences you've had with founders and, and how they talk about their email list size um, or even how they've put it together over a period of time, but, but talking about the size and quality of their existing audience as they begin to take their campaign live? We spend quite a bit of effort in our normal campaigns uh, building the we're in uh, lead chains, goal of email collection. Um, it's great when founders come to us with large email lists. However, it's not all that common necessarily. So it's, it's a common struggle that people have. Um, thinking about examples here. One of the I think the most powerful things that founders do is 
keeping their, right, because usually they're raising money more than once. Often the most successful founders that we work with that have larger audience sizes are those who, you know, who aren't new in their company, who have already maybe an experience of, of raising money. Um, and one of the key things that we see them doing successfully is, is just that regular cadence of outreach. It's really important to just keep people informed on business updates, company traction, maybe like an annual report at the end of the year. You know, I, I think that there's a lot to say for staying in touch, right? And um, let's see, we, I mean, we definitely have other examples. Jason, are there examples you can think of with uh, clients we've had recently you might point to? Yeah, uh, you know, I could tell you that naming them that that some of them have said they have under a thousand and um, even starting to address content marketing and the email newsletters that go out frequently you know, once a week, twice a week more uh, to the audience. It's just such a low uh, mass that we've, we've run advertising campaigns uh, during the campaign with uh, lead forms, Facebook lead forms, autofill could generally get a good cost. Uh, in some cases, a dollar, in some cases, two to five dollars, even if it's a you know, six to ten dollar lead, but if it's a good quality investor prospect, it becomes very beneficial to uh, build up this audience, uh, CRM even, uh, of, of prospective investors. And then as you're taking them to the funnel, to, to the funnel of your, your, your portal, you own the data. It's, it's your audience that you're sending them. You don't have to wait to maybe get that information from your portal. Some our portals are showing less and less uh, data these days. Um, in many cases, the email marketing not only produces for the first round, but as Abby's mentioning, later rounds. So we see investors scrap to get that together. Um, you know, and then we, we see groups that are on multiple rounds, they have that existing audience and it's, it's a much easier process for them uh, for later campaigns. Um, we definitely have invest, uh, have founders who are working different investors and able to go after some of those large, larger targets, higher net worth, higher household income, you know, discussing larger transactional values um, during the course um, of the campaign. Um, and, and then have clients that have you know, massive consumer audiences uh, to begin. Abby, what do we have going on here on this page? Last thing I would say on email is that it's a really Please. powerful way to just really uh, nurture your audience, right? It's just once you have their email, you can just keep sending them different messages. And unless they really take that next action to opt out, you've got them for a long time. So it's definitely a, a powerful channel to, to utilize and we leverage it quite a bit. Okay, so kind of like I was saying before, um, equity crowdfunding is hard work. Fundraising is hard work. And there's really, as far as I can tell, no getting around it if you wanna be successful. The most successful founders are the ones who put in the effort, right? And what does that look like? What does is, what is right effort look like for founders when they're doing equity crowdfunding? Um, part of it is, I mean, a lot of times that we work with founders because we can take some of that effort off their plate, right? So it, it you know, a company could choose to write the, con the social organic content pieces. They could choose to write, portal updates on a weekly basis or by more, more than once a week. You could be writing all the emails yourself or you can engage with a, a marketing agency like DNA who can take some of that weight off of your, uh, off the plate. But anyway, um, other, other channels, right? right. Uh, like I was saying before, you, you really wanna be leveraging as many of the different channels as you can on a consistent basis. It's important for, especially for early stage startups, that the founding team is really out there in front of the raise, because as an early stage startup, investors care about who the team is because it's a really powerful indicator about whether they're gonna succeed or not, right? And um, so part of that, we often like to use webinars on a monthly basis because that gets you out in front of your investor audience, gives them a chance to ask you questions firsthand. Um, you know, they get to see your face and hear the pitch deck. 
these are examples of the kinds of um, efforts that we see uh, being really key for founders to engage in when they're when you're doing equity crowdfunding. It's not just as easy as putting the offering page live and then expecting people to find it and, and decide to go for it. It takes a lot more effort. Than that. Yeah, and they say the most active founders have the most successful campaigns. Yes. Uh, what does that mean? Going to local pitch events. I just spoke at one today with uh, the Polk Institute and led a workshop with a portal and a you know, securities attorney and worked with about 30 groups at a time, about 100 uh, throughout the day. There was a pitch event afterwards. There are, are nonstop uh, opportunities like that in major cities and, and even online. Uh, you know, geographic uh, barriers are not really as existent today. Um, being featured by by press, so not just local investor events, niche investor events, but but press, and, and just stacking, stacking, stacking different lead generation of investor sources. And it's very much a rising tides lifts all ships uh, sensation when your campaign is moving on one of these platforms where you bring in a $50,000 investor, an angel investor that you met locally, and then the audience on your portal, you know, Start Engine, Net Capital, WeFunder, Republic, Title Three funds, whatever it may be, uh, sees that and says, wow, this campaign really moved since last week. Let, let me hop in there, let, let me participate. Your community then sees that. So look at, look at this brand we're following moving. I already love the product, let, let me put in, some more. Uh, we'll see 10 to 30 percent of investors participate multiple times, or let's say it's the majority of community, community members who, who have not invested yet. That this could be the spark that they need to be able to, to act, or most importantly, the bottom of the marketing funnel that goes from awareness to consideration, intent. They intend to invest. It's a good percentage of those that never invest to investment. Uh, there's two layers underneath. I just talked about repeat investment, but advocacy. That peer-to-peer -peer marketing again that, that that's what active founders are stimulating every time they're featured in the news every time they bring in another investor that that moves things at a higher frequency um, higher you know movement level as a whole um, so really look for as many opportunities as you can. Sure, working with an agency, this should be streamlined. We have clients that do nothing more than hop on a weekly reporting call with us and interview every couple of weeks so that we can build content off some of the answers that we get. Yes, but you want to be doing as much as possible towards your, your raise. Fundraising is still a full-time job for early stage companies. Uh, equity crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding portals, platforms are, are merely tools and, and can help you do this in an accelerated fashion. Uh, but but you really want them to amplify versus do all of the, the work for you. Now, we get asked a lot about the pre-campaign. Uh, I love this word, inspire your investors, but, but pre-campaign marketing, the, the strategy, what happens before the campaign begins. Um, you know, th th there are compliance factors here. You don't want to do anything that appears as, as priming uh, the market. You don't want to do anything that talks about your raise be before you should. Uh, however, if you're planning on doing a raise next year, six months, three months, why not plan a marketing campaign that, that fits into those parameters to, to build your audience? Maximize impact from the start of your race. Uh, pre-launch at least two to three months before you should start working on strategy, uh, you know, building your audience further, engaging your audience further, as Abby was emphasizing there, so that once the investment opportunity becomes available, you have a more captive audience. You have a community that's maybe even conversing with themselves on a daily basis. Uh, and then building momentum in the first two weeks sets the stage for a strong first month and allows for intensive marketing efforts in the following months. Uh, King's Crowd, we reference uh, Chris Lestrino and uh, his, his team 
its platforms and the companies have acquired over time uh, as authorities in the space in terms of analytics. And they've put out an article in the past month, past two months, about how important those first two weeks are for a campaign. Uh, I could tell you, going back to references and Indiegogo and Kickstarter, that it all came down in the first day. And if you didn't raise a third of your goal in the first day of a 30-day campaign, there was a 70% chance or higher that you were going to fail. So how could you raise you know, 10K of 30K, 30K of 30, 35K of 100K, a third of your campaign or more? It's all pre-launch. A little different for equity crowdfunding, uh, but, but that, that sentiment is still there. That fundamental, that formula still very much makes sense. Even if you're looking at a three-month equity crowdfunding campaign to raise five million or a million or whatever it may be, uh, you need to come out of the gate with a bang. That first day, those, those first two weeks, I uh, can't stress how important that they are and what they do to be positioned in a great spot on the, the portal's algorithm. Each one has different rules. You raise this much in the first 14 days. You raise this much over the past week. You have the most exciting announcement that the most investors have engaged with over the past week. They will feature you. So if you're asking, well, why are they talking about pre-launch so much? I, I have a limited budget. I want to be focusing my budget on, on you know, hard traffic, advertising, whatever it may be. Uh, and during the live campaign, why are they talking about pre-launch? It, it directly shows up in those early stages of the pre-launch. You know, whether it's the, the retargeting and bringing people back that you've talked to uh, during these stages, uh, whether it is um, you know, audiences that have uh, you know, become infatuated with your brand and, and you know, naturally find it just because they're following your social channels or other organic channels in that period of time, you know, can't point at it enough. When we're looking at the King's Crowd metrics every Monday morning, which we do as a team, and see the top drivers for the past week, if they're in their first week, they're in their first two weeks, it's, it's exciting. Uh, some of the platforms, it goes from private mode to public mode, and they come out with a, a huge amount. Others, it's just initial traction. If that continues week over week, if every time a prospective investor gets to your offering, uh, that there's more, uh, it definitely speaks in a good way towards the potential of your campaign. Abby, what does it mean to build a strong investor? Hey, Jason, I had some, I got kicked off the call somehow for a minute, but I wanted to go back briefly to the pre campaign okay. discussion. Can you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because we didn't really talk about um, like what is it that we can talk about during pre campaign, and okay. so I just want to briefly touch on the just kind of top common themes that we normally are featuring at that time, and it is relevant, it's entirely relevant, right? So usually we set it up for e email capture goals um, and we want a message about mission because people are engaged on what you're doing as a company and the market opportunity, right? Those are two key things. And the other third piece would be any kind of company traction and business updates, so that. Um, and then second part is that just echoing what you were saying, Jason, about how important that first couple weeks are, is to sort of look at the whole equity crowdfunding trajectory about how you're coming in with that first couple, it's usually broken down to three parts. It's the initial push, the middle that can feel like a lot like the doldrums where you have to work really hard for each conversion. There's a lot of um, building up and nurturing your audience. And then we see a lot more action at the very end of campaigns. It's no surprise that people react to um, fear missing out and urgency messaging. And we absolutely leverage that in a strong way at the end of campaigns. Anyway, so, but the first part of it, building up that audience ahead to en enable yourself to have a strong launch is so key. Uh, if you don't have a strong launch, then there's, it's so hard to, to build, come back from that. Okay, what was the next slide? <laughs> It is difficult to come back. It, it's the perfect thing to add to a plan, pre-campaign, and, and then just moving to consistency and, and you know, a strong investor community foundation. Yeah, I mean, that's just really, it's a, 
a bit of a repeat on the same message is that it, you do want that consistency and, and relatively high frequency for your audience outreach. Um, you just want to stay in front of people. You want to stay relevant. You want to remind them about what you're doing and why it matters. Um, what would you add to that, Jason? You know, it starts touching on investor due diligence as well. So beyond your existing community, uh, just to add to it, not to stray from the topic, but just talking about how your community grows as a whole, uh, people don't believe what they see online. They're not going to see your offering page and say, okay, here's my social security number. Here, here is my banking info. Uh, here is money. Uh, as much as, huh, this looks interesting. And they're probably going to move on and forget about you. Uh, hopefully they're brought back with an advertisement or some type of organic content marketing. Maybe they recall and, and visit you know, on their own, although I'll tell you it's a smaller percentage of the time. And when they do, that huh, interesting may go into, you know, let me look more into this company. Maybe this is a viable investment opportunity for me. And what do they see when they Google is going to be reflected in how they convert. So having active social channels that are consistently posting updates, you know, conference participation, new partnerships, quarterly financial statements, new milestones reach, traction. You want to show these audiences that you are a moving ship and this is their opportunity to hop on. Uh, this investment opportunity is not going to be built, available forever. Maybe you continue doing equity crowdfunding, but at a higher valuation. So now's the time to get in at this price. If you go public, if you have a you know, publicly known liquidity event and, and your share price has jumped in value, they're going to be frustrated down the line if they don't. And now is the time for them to invest. That, that, that's what you want them thinking. That's what you want them seeing for themselves when they're looking at your social channels. And, and you know, you're working off a content calendar and we have content marketing webinars that you should really dive into if you haven't seen already. Uh, checklists, all types of information that you can use for yourself, even templates. But uh, that, that, that's also what this touches on. And, and you know, if you see someone, if, if you see a you know, prospective investor who's very interested, they may sign up uh, for your email. They may start following your social platforms if you give them, you know, the right funnel towards it and then be part of this community. You know, the community itself too, you're gonna to have different tiers for how engaged each audience member is. So again, if they're getting brought back with an ad and they don't see any activity in your social channels, they haven't received an email from you for a while, the same thing you're talking about in February, you're now talking about in May and you're gonna be talking about again in August, it, it, it's just gonna show a stagnant nature. Uh, to the campaign, uh, let alone you're just going to hear a softer response uh, from the investors at that point on the conversion rate. Expanding reach and impact incorporate strategic partnerships and networking. So including events, field marketing, B2B contact lists in your marketing plan for, for maximum impact, they, they can all be part of your audience. They can all be voices in your community. Uh, identify strategic, par strategic partners who have access to your target audience. Uh, collaborating to promote your business and expand your audience base. So if they have a complementing product to, to yours or, you know, vice versa, they're pretty much the same, uh, it could make total sense for them to push traffic, push audiences your way. If they want to, uh, you know, promote what you're doing and, and you know, get you the funding that you need so, so you can grow and that growth can make them more successful. It's, it's all about strategic partnerships. It's not just for you. It has to serve them as well too. This can be a great way to get third parties to point to their warm, existing, loyal audiences and have them join yours. I've seen this be particularly impactful, um, especially when we get guest, um, guest speakers onto our webinars, right? Because let's say that, okay, you've got the founder, CEO of a company, and they get their strategic partner to join them on a webinar, and their strategic partner invites their whole audience. It's a brilliant way to build your audience. Um, 
and you know everybody benefits from that one. Um, strategic partnerships are such a great way to show company traction. It's just a really brilliant piece of social proof that shows that your company has value and is making strides toward your goals. Um, so we're always asking, you know, well, have you thought about who uh, you might leverage or yes, uh, found very strong. Uh, oh, I know. Oftentimes companies come to us saying that they're reluctant to use their B2B contact list about, uh, and even tell them at all that they're raising money. And it's, um, it, it surprises me because we often see so much overlap between people who care about your mission and investors. So we, we call them investors. It's like customers who also are investors or, you know, it, it just, there's so much overlap there. And I would really encourage founders, it, we could talk about special messaging that to make it, you know, maybe more palatable for your specific industry. But if you're thinking to exclude your B2B contact list for any reason, we should figure out a way to work around that because um, we definitely recommend against it. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else there, Jason? Do you agree with me there? Figure out a way to do it. Like Abby said, uh, explore. We've seen misconceptions years past of B2B can't do equity crowdfunding. This is B2C. Uh, this is tech hardware. Th this is very specific types of companies where, you know, you look at companies like Rad AI, you look at companies that are, are pure B2B plays. Um, and, and not only getting huge uh, consumer investor volumes, uh, but but being able to incorporate strategic partners um, to promote, being able to incorporate strategic partners to invest. Uh, there's a way to do it, as you're saying here, Abby, and we definitely want to see a reluctancy as much of a you know question of what is the best way to do it. So pre-launch advertising amplifies the reach. Advertising has been a very consistent vehicle for us here uh, and could tell you whether it's some of the in-house portal marketing teams and their focuses on advertising or other agencies. Um, any thought leaders who talk about equity crowdfunding mention advertising and there is a definite application towards pre-launch and with audience building. You could be running Facebook-like campaigns. You could be running lead generation campaigns to build your email audience. And you could do it in a, a very dependable way in terms of, hey, uh, I'm seeing 20 cents per like, dollar per like. If I spend $10,000 in this period, this is what my social audience is going to look like. I'm seeing a dollar or $10, somewhere in between per email sign up. Here's what this is going to look like. I know I'm going to get X amount of visitors, maybe not signups, maybe not likes completely, but X amount of traffic to, towards this KPI, towards this key performance indicator by using advertising. It's, it's very scalable. Once it's working, it can be cranked up to higher levels. Uh, this is all instrumental to, towards Reg D, accredited investor raises as well too. If you want to build up a large pool of accredited investors, maybe that are enthusiasts of your industry, maybe that already follow your page, so you know they have affinity for your product, and, and then an investment opportunity gets presented to them, versus just coming at them asking them to be partners, you know, until a liquidity event. Uh, it could be good to build a relationship first. So pre-launch advertising, yes, yes, and yes. Not much to add there, Jason, I, except to say that I see it work, right? I really am a big fan of the lead gen ads. Um, yeah, and I'd like to see people take the time to do more of it. So we'll move to the live campaign. We've, we've done pre-launch. Uh, you're putting together a strategy. Maybe you've now developed an audience of tens of thousands of prospective uh, investors in your email audience. Uh, maybe it's on your social audience. You're moving to your live campaign. Even if you haven't had the opportunity to build your community up, th this is an approach. We're going to give you some ideas, some tactics on how to engage your investors 
uh, how to engage your community to become investors during the live campaign. And it all starts with transparency and consistent communication. There's so much to be said, and Abby has mentioned this earlier, about the story. Your story as a founder, how your company was created, how your product was crafted, how you were able to build it for scale, how you're able to hit initial milestones and get industry recognition, mainstream uh, spotlights at that. You want to continuously nurture and develop your audience and keep them abreast of all the developments. You want them to feel like they're sitting at your conference table in your office and hearing all of the updates for the week. Open, honest communication, a couple of timely updates on progress, building trust among community members, stakeholders, and keeping them formed and involved. That is the sense that your prospective investors and completed investors, 10 to 30% of investors participate multiple times in these Reg CF campaigns. Uh, you want them to have that sentiment. If it feels like they don't know you, they don't know what's happened, maybe your campaign already ended, it's been months since they heard anything, you'll see it on your social posts and social ads. We have to do reputation management all the time. Hey, it's been so long. We have no clue what's going on. We were promised this. Communication, transparent, consistent, highly recommend for every group. Uh, give them a Steve Jobs monthly webinar presentation. Uh, let them know what's going on, even if this is just for your current community, your current investors, uh, but, but hopefully you're growing that community on a daily basis. Abby, what are some tactics? I, I can't, and there's not much to say. Oh, oh, I think the Wi Fi is a little delayed. That works for nurturing the audience. I, yeah. It might be me. I don't know. Yeah. We do this every single day. Um, this, is, this is the bread and butter of, of really what we are aiming to accomplish at DNA. We are, you know, bringing investors back. They're reminding them why it's a good investment opportunity. Okay, tactics. What do we do? Advertising is such a key piece. How else are you going to get people who don't know about you yet to discover you if you're not uh, talking to them in person? If you're not en engaging with them on your social channels, there's, it's you. You have some limited options here. You can, we can always do press releases, right? That does get you out there in a broader audience, but nothing like advertising really and we we have a very strategic uh, approach for how we approach it um, because a common problem that we see companies do is focus overly much on the product that they're selling and not enough of looking at it through the investment lens um, so we're always going to be pushing our clients to really think about those investment talking points um, it's really key and it's easy to lean too hard into the product. So um, again, we're going to be consistent and, and be following up on multiple channels, multiple times a week. The reason that you want to post portal updates frequently is because depending on the platform, each platform is a little bit different, but most of the time, anyone who's following your campaign will get emailed with your portal update and that'll bring them back to your offering page again. So that's a key, that's a key tactic right there. Um, organic content is pretty important too. And I think my favorite, my favorite one, the one that I think is most valuable has got to be the webinars because you get, you have the value ahead of the event, engaging your audience about, you can remind them about your mission, your market opportunity, top reasons to invest, a, you know, value proposition all in advance of the webinar. So that's, you know, multiple talking points, just getting them up to the point, letting them know about the event. Then there's the actual event. Then you have a post event recap. Plus you can cut those things into snippets depending on how it turns out and potentially use those for organic content posts. Um, so as a tactic, I really feel strongly that getting out there in front of your campaign as a founder, getting your face in front of it is pretty key and a webinar is a great tactic um, that can help you. Can help you, can be a great opportunity to get a guest, to have that social proof, that third party validation, live on your content, maybe 
potential for that guest to promote to their audience as well. Uh, you could splinter the content into smaller pieces, distribute across other organic channels, such as social media, such as email, uh, you, you use it for the portal updates and, and then stem into the emails of followers on that platform, like you mentioned, Abby. Uh, can't talk about webinars enough. Uh, and even know some groups that are reg D that do it at, at high frequencies. Um, you know, as you're posting on social media, by the way, uh, you, you know, let's say it's LinkedIn. Uh, you talk about it again and again. I want to do the same post again and again and again. It should feel like something different talking about the update and referring back to the campaign. You want to have it blended in there with product updates. You don't want every post to be about the raise, but as we talked about not shying away from B2B audiences, you can definitely post again and again about it. Um, recommend it all living in a strategy with the content calendar so you're not being too repetitive to your audience, rather taking them down an experience and focusing on different points, different areas of your business, of your raise, of your partners, each week feeling different uh, throughout the course of your campaign. Uh, you can direct message on top of that as well. Uh, we've recently had some software uh, built for us. Um, we promote webinars with this. Uh, we promote uh, different types of contact around it. We see calls scheduled, things along those lines with your existing audience. Uh, LinkedIn does have, does have limits for how many individuals you can reach out to per day some workarounds uh, with that. Um, with some softwares, you can get up to 4,000, 5,000 direct messages uh, throughout the course of the month. So if you have an audience of, of 5,000 connections on LinkedIn, you want to you know, anticipate at least a month to touch everybody. Um, if you're 20,000, at least four months, you, you get the idea here. Um, but it, it could be a good opportunity. You just, you know, as much as possible, want to make sure it doesn't sound like spam and, you know, feels like it's coming directly from you if it's an automated tool to do so. Um, showcasing your, um, your traction, sh showcasing your offering with webinars, as Abby's mentioning here, uh, can't, can't talk about it enough times. Uh, we see so many groups not incorporate this into their strategy and we bring it up to them and it sounds like a new idea. Uh, but all the portals talk about it. Uh, it's a general statement, enhancing investor engagement webinars, provide a platform for showcasing your project. Uh, instead of pitching a thousand people one by one, it pitch them on a webinar uh, and repurpose it uh, afterwards. Be able to share that video on, on YouTube and other platforms afterwards. Uh, address investor concerns, the common questions you're getting, strengthen investor confidence, present your pitch deck, include a Q&A session, highlight founders, partners, lead investors, company traction. You can do it all on a webinar, and that leads directly into post-campaign tactics um, in our last 12 minutes or so here. Uh, but whether you're you know, distributing the webinar across uh, YouTube uh, whether you're finding ways to, to get this video to your audience in an ongoing fashion, uh, you could have it live, you could have it promoted post-campaign to keep your investors updated. Um, Abby, as we're wrapping the live campaign and then getting to the message of don't stop updating, what are some things we should stress to founders? Okay, so don't stop updating. We're in post campaign now. So your camp, your fundraising is concluded. Um, and it's really key that you want to, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't sound too surprising. I don't think you want to keep up with the messaging. Realize frequently, but I want to let people know that you're still an active business making progress because it, it is really important for investor relations, right? The key things I think you should keep talking about um, are usually focused around social proof, any kind of new partnerships, company traction, quarterly updates, um, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it'll help you keep building your audience in case you need to raise money again. Um, and it'll keep your investor base 
you know, relatively happy um, because you, you haven't forgotten about them. People need to just have it in front of their face frequently. You really need to keep up the frequency, um, including on portal updates, right? So uh, I think something that a lot of companies forget about is that your offering page, you can still post portal updates after your campaign closes. And it can be a great way to keep your um, audience engaged. You know, it's a simple thing. It doesn't have to be long, um, but it is entirely relevant. Yeah. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, you know, I'd look to in involve your community as much as possible during the campaign and then have that carried on afterwards. So another idea for LinkedIn is you could do a post and look to get as many investors as possible to, to comment on that post. LinkedIn's great about showing um, comments that you've made to people who follow you, uh, who may not follow the page that you're, you're commenting on. So if you have you know, 50 investors, 100 investors commenting on your post, it's gonna show up high in the algorithm because you're telling LinkedIn people want to engage with this content. Uh, it's going to show up potentially to the followers of those commenters uh, who uh, 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 have audiences that, that aren't following you know, your page. Um, and, and it's just going to look very good to any new audiences who get there and see that type of activity. You can have that continue post campaign as well. And as Abby mentioned, whether that's towards your next round, whether that's towards, uh, you know, your growth milestones as a whole, whether that is just to, to keep everybody nurtured, this is a cohort that you're building that can continue to live. I've seen in-person investor meetings, uh, you know, happening uh, after um, the raise. I've seen it coordinated with conferences and breakout dinners or events afterwards that are occurring. There's so much that can be done. And sometimes we forget the value of a single audience member by being behind these digital devices. And you get into a room and there's 300 people who have physically invested in your company, 30 people. And it, it comes to life very quickly. And there's real relationships that can be had uh, I've seen B2B deals come from these communities. I've seen franchises, uh, new franchise e owners. Uh, I've seen all different types of partnerships that in some cases are more value than the initial raise. Uh, I've seen media, I've seen so many great things come from the community during the campaign, after the campaign, we were talking about pre-campaign earlier. Uh, Abby, I know you're the account manager on Avidane Graphene, uh, one of the top campaigns in Net Capital. had a very successful campaign uh, raised last year as well, too. What did they do in between rounds that we want to talk about here, which, you know, post campaign, but, but leading into the next campaign? Avidane's uh, CEO is so great at getting out in front of people. He is working so hard behind the scenes with in-person meetings. He's always doing webinars. He's very active in supporting and developing the content that he wants to see. Um, and I just a role model as far as, uh, as founding CEOs go. It's really excellent to work with. Anyway, what they did uh, between rounds was they held a webinar, they released press releases, they ran lead gen um, advertising to build up their email audience, um, followed all the best practices and into their, their new round with a good amount of momentum. And so they, I mean, they put out, they put in so much effort to them themselves, right? They're posting on LinkedIn, they're posting on social channels, they're reminding people on their portal, they're doing the portal updates between rounds, um, they're posting about business updates, they're on other people's podcasts, they, you know, it's just that he's doing all the things. It's been really, really 
wonderful to interact with such an active um, fund. Jason, what else do you see that they've been done? So Brad is such a model CEO to be able to point at. And I've had him on my podcast. Definitely recommend checking out the episode. You could hear all about his past uh, successes and in multiple areas before choosing to focus on, on graphene and, and being at the forefront of what, what I would say is the graphene revolution. There's so many applications, and so many even verticals, government contracts, so much stuff that it is possible there. I, I, I definitely recommend you check out the podcast. Uh, and you know, Br Brad came to us uh, early on his last campaign about community building to support his efforts he was doing offline. Uh, Brad saw you know, ongoing success and, and you know, with, with different obstacles that he directly overcame. And we really look at what we do uh, as an extension of our clients extension of Brad, extension of Avidane and Graphene, uh, an extension uh, in general uh, of any client that we're working with. And not only did he build an audience of some 14, some you know, 1400 some odd investors during the course of his Reg CF, but he had followers on net capital. He had people following up that didn't get a chance to invest. So when we had discussions in between rounds, it was, hey, how do we do all of this? How do we nurture the audience so that once a new round is live, we're able to maximize what these individuals are, are doing and how they're participating? And you know, for months ahead of time, uh, you know, compliantly marketed Avidane Graphene. And then once... The day came where he was able to announce the investment opportunity, saw a portion of those folks show up right away and participate, uh, continue marketed. Um, there's been, you know, slower weeks. There's been spikes. They're a top campaign right now here in May 2023. It's all Reg CF. And it's, it's really a result of those efforts. Uh, that Brad made uh, for, for audience development, audience building, audience nurturing. Um, and, you know, excited to see where, where everything goes here. Um, Brad's also been a, a client, which you know, he's talked about on the podcast, that leans into what's working. So rather than saying, hey, uh, advertising's performing good, um, how do we... <sighs> How do we get the best metrics on what's running right now? Uh, Brad will say advertising is running good. You know, how do we do it at higher scale next week, the week after? And, and it's really stood. If you look at the King's Crown metrics for how his campaign, how his team's campaign has evolved, uh, that audience has definitely been present. And the traffic has jumped and compounded on itself as it's been working. Uh, have another great podcast episode with uh, Charles from Adam Beam, uh, who, you know, after a successful round of raising, continued to update the investor audience and, and saw them show up in the early stages uh, of their next campaign, um, did additional lead generation and I didn't mention anything about a raise, but, but once one was talked about, they were able to really capitalize on, on new audiences. So, you know, whether we're talking about a net capital campaign, this is a start engine campaign and you know, multiple rounds there, uh, both into seven figures. Uh, you want to develop your community post campaign. Don't give up. Uh, <laughs> have this DJ Callen meme here, uh, which everyone seems to uh, love. Uh, another one is how you want to look at this. Not, hey, we just did a webinar. Uh, we just did a post, we just did an email. Don't stop your marketing efforts. I can show you all different types of graphs of what happens when a brand stops advertising. To summarize, they're not good. And these are age old, uh, you know, ad agency, Mad Men Day uh, statistics. Uh, the same is very true for equity crowdfunding. The same is very true for community marketing. Do not stop. If it's underperforming, look for ways to do it better. Uh, if it's working for you, look for ways to, to really capture the moment and scale. 
continue building your audience and expanding reach beyond the campaign period. Marketing makes uh, visibility, new investors contributing long-term growth and success that much more maintained. So leave the right paper trail, build the right community, be with yourself as a media publisher and getting out this content that your audience is engaging with on an ongoing basis. And it will show up statistically. There's a much better chance that it will in your next round. And this is certainly, you know, beginning of the trail, end of the trail that you're looking at. So if you're in the early stages, anticipate the type of activity all the way through. So Abby, as we wrap here and, you know, want to make us available for questions that uh, we didn't get to today, um, please feel free to reach out to Abby. Please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. We're friendly. We welcome a warm marketing conversation anytime. We can sit down with some coffee and talk about ideas towards your campaign, towards your investor marketing. Give some final notes on my side there. Abby, what do you want to leave the audience with before we wrap today? Well, I'd say to sum up our presentation today, Jason, that it's, you know, marketing is comes down to consistency, right? And it's really important that you stick with it, that you put in the effort, and that you keep your brand out there in front of people, whether you're fundraising or in between rounds, or especially if you have a live campaign. Um, put in the effort, yeah, and we can help you, right? Advertising is definitely one of the key ways to get your um, campaign out in front of new eyes. Yeah. Anyway, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, Jason? I was just repeating you there. Put in the effort. Can't echo that enough. And, and utilize all the resources at your disposal. So. Mm -hmm. Us, we could share what's working. Advertising is a broad concept. We could share about our audiences, different audiences you can target, all the filters that make it available to get the exact traffic you need. Uh, we're going to high volume of these campaigns, so look at it as a responsibility. And uh, Abby, th thanks for opening up, sharing all these details uh, with the founders that tuned in today or anyone who's listening in on a later recording. Uh, it's been a blast, and I hope everyone's been taking notes. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Abby. want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Do not hesitate to reach out to us. We are an open book. And uh, please keep logging into our content. We'll see you on the next webinar. Take care.